Mahalo Russ Little. Aren't I blessed to have him as my music director? <laughs> yeah. So, Ikoma Mai, welcome to Unity of Dallas and an Aloha Sunday service that Russ and I are so thrilled to bring to you all today. I was inspired to begin offering Aloha Sunday services after my dear friend, mentor, and colleague, Reverend Sky St. John, made his transition in December of 2013. This is a picture of Reverend Sky and Russ and me and my children, Michael and Megan, that you may remember, and our wedding that was on Kailua Beach in June of 2006. I like to bring that energy and just to acknowledge the presence and the love of sky, that spirit of aloha that lives on in my heart. All of my Hawaiian messages are from a book, a compendium of treasures, and this is it. I can bring it today because I didn't have to pack it in a suitcase to take it with me. But it's, this is called Alela Noeau, and it is a collection of Hawaiian wisdom teachings and poetical sayings by Dr. Mary Havana Pukui. All of my messages are derived from these wisdom teachings, and I have countless. So everyone is unique for the community that I visit. So today, I chose for Unity of Dallas, in particular, this message. And I'm going to say it in Hawaiian first. Hekeha ho oma ima ike aloha. Now, maybe you don't understand Hawaiian. I'm learning. Keha is do. And oma ima is cleansing. And of course, aloha is the word for love. And I think the idea of love as a cleansing do is so important for where we are in this spiritual community and to become even more heightened in our awareness of the love that we have inside us that will help with the healing. Now, sometimes people say, well, why is your ministry called Unity Spirit of Aloha? Doesn't aloha just mean hello or goodbye? And how is that even relevant? Well, aloha really has a deeper, more significant message. The literal meaning is sharing of life energy in the present moment. And isn't that profound? It's like if you're close enough to another person and you can even attune your breathing to each other, that's aloha. That's the spirit of aloha, really moving and being in sync and harmony. The slide up there talks about ohana first. We are a spiritual ohana, meaning family. We count our blessings. We are delighting in our friendships, our opportunities to come together. I know that most of you didn't come to see me today. You came to see each other. You came because you wanted to be in this community. And whether people are here today or not, we have a rich history filled with love, compassion, kindness. When I thought about this particular definition about seeing the good and being grateful and all the delights of this journey that we're on, it reminded me of our Unity of Dallas core values. And I affirmed those and said those for countless Sundays when I platformed a lot back in 2011. And uh, I thought I would bring that energy into the service as well because it really helps to anchor and ground for me the whole meaning of the spirit of aloha. So Russ sang a fantastic version of Jason Mraz. And if you don't know Jason, check him out. He's very unity, even though I don't know that he knows that. And Russ, <laughs> Russ wore a Jason-like hat today, just so if you know Jason, you, you know, had a little linkage with that. He, he likes to get in costume. So we're on the bridge. You know, when I was driving to North Carolina from Dallas with a few stops along the way a couple of weeks ago, I was listening to Jason on the radio. And this song in particular really resonated with me, even though I've sung it probably a thousand times already. And I said, this is perfect. 
This fits what I perceive to be a launching point for Unity of Dallas because I believe that we're on the precipice of more magnificence, more greatness, more profound accomplishments and love and energy and all the things that we are being called to do than ever before. And yes, go ahead and applaud. The fact that you are here today tells me that you agree that for whatever reason, you have not given up, that you believe in yourself, you believe in what we bring and call from each other when we come together in community, and we're on a very significant launching point. So here we are, and Rumi, our 14th century Sufi poet, reminds us that love is the bridge. Love is the bridge between you and everything else. It's the bridge that we have to each other. It's the bridge that we have into our own heart, and it's the bridge that we're walking across into our divinity. So when I speak, I like to bring forth messages from some of my favorite Unity teachers. And of course, I had looked at quotes from Charles Fillmore and Myrtle Fillmore, our Unity co-founders. But for this message in particular, there were a few people that really spoke to me that you may or may not know, but Sue Sicking is my personal hero. Now, she passed from this earthly plane a number of years ago, but she lived to the ripe age of 93. And after a nearly fatal automobile accident when she was 35 years old, she decided to change careers and she went into ministry and she became a licensed and ordained unity minister. Well, she had such a heart connection and that her family in particular was so inspired by her that her husband and three of their five children also became unity ministers. Isn't that a cool story? Well, she had a little small church the size about 5,000 in California in the mid 30s and she traveled and spoke around the world so she was truly an emissary of peace and love and this is what Sue said I'm going to run through several of my favorite messages of hers love is the heart of the universe it opens the petals of the rose and adorns the tree with its gift of fruit it quenches the thirst of the dried up earth as well as the thirst of the soul. And we're also here because we are still thirsty, aren't we? Our souls have a longing. We have a thirst that we're looking to fill. Love can do that. Now these are stepping stones. Russ reminded me when he saw that, that some people might misinterpret that as like, a stack of rocks, but these are stepping stones. And that's one way we can walk across with love. Love is the only answer to the modern world. We have tried everything else. We have not really tried love. And this was Sue's opinion in about mm, the mid 70s. She says, love is the power that can banish hospitals, old age, loneliness, unhappiness, and want. It is the power that can heal the human body. Some of us have had that experience already. Set us free from all bondage, but first it must be set free to work through us. Just like the Daily Word reminded us today, it's about self-care first. Self-care is love, self-love. It's not about selfishness. It's a way that we honor the truth of who we are and celebrate our divinity. And finally, Sue offers us this message. Love all who cross your path from anywhere on the face of the earth. You may not like them. You may not understand their ways, but love is caring and desiring the highest good for all. Now, we often find that challenging. I do. Sometimes there's a situation. Maybe I'm tuning into something on the TV or in the news, and it's hard to send love. But really and truly, love is the healing balm. You know, when we 
are stung by an insect or if we've had a sunburn, we want a healing balm, something to coat and soothe and protect. Aloha is the aloe for the soul. Love is the aloe for the soul. That's what helps us heal. Now, some of us are probably still carrying a teeny bit of maybe skepticism or doubt, maybe fear about what's next, both in our own lives and maybe for Unity of Dallas, maybe for our country, maybe for our planet. But love is that cleansing dew. Again, Rumi speaks to us from the 14th century. He is, by the way, the number one selling poet in the US. I find that fascinating, don't you? <laughs> he said, yesterday I was clever. I was gonna change the world. I wanted to change the world. And I have certainly been there. You know, Kevin mentioned that I had a background in counseling. And just me as an individual, it's sometimes easier to focus on people outside of me. But then when we tune into our divine wisdom, we know and we take this into our heart and into our knowing that I am the only one that I can change. If I wanna really start where it's gonna have some impact with myself, so how do we do that? How does that look, what does that look like? I found a scripture that, from Psalms that really spoke to me and I realized that this is a very perfect verse for unity communities because it talks about how God's people live together in unity. And that's a challenge for all unity communities, not just here, but it's the ideal how good and pleasant it is when that happens. We know that it's not about just coming together and sitting beside each other without having an interaction, without speaking. When we are really in unity with each other, it's when we're supporting each other. It's when we're listening deeply. It's when we're lending a hand. It's when we're stepping up, like all those cute people that have on yellow t-shirts and colorful lays. And many of us have done that and are continuing to do that. So I wanna just say how grateful I am for all of you that are here today stepping out in faith and for all the ways in which you've demonstrated love and commitment to unity of Dallas or the greater unity movement and your own well-being, of course. And sometimes it feels like that, doesn't it? Have you all had the experience that you are trying to help move a hammer that is so huge and so heavy and so un movable, but when you team up together and you have people of all shapes and size and genders and ethnicities and belief systems that you can move that hammer and you can hammer that nail. So let's just be grateful of the people that are here that are working in the trenches and the people that are just showing up or just not just, but also holding us in prayer, knowing that we are on the right and perfect path in love. So, you know, I came right after Donald Curtis was at Unity of Dallas. I was first introduced to Unity when Ralph was the minister and, you know, he was here a few weeks ago. I was a, I had a five-year-old and a one-year-old then, if you can believe that. And I trudged down from Denton, Texas and did everything I could to get here with my two little kids and then get back. But I wanted to interject a little of the energy of Donald because he had a huge impact on all of us, whether we knew him or not. And he had a very, very positive impact on the New Thought Movement and the Greater Unity Movement. He was a leader. He said this about love. Love is the questing of my soul to join with its source, to join with its source. Oh, I love that. Because when love, when we are centered in love, 
Love allows God to express through us and thus all things in our life will find perfect balance. Perfect balance is something that is a challenge for me. Anybody else deal with perfect balance? <laughs> you know, and you may not be able to see it, but I am standing on the only surfboard on which I have perfect balance. And this is my rug surfboard that I ordered from Hawaii, just as a little fun, playful part of my services. But wouldn't it be great? You know, I think I put something about balance on every New Year's list as an intention or a resolution, whatever you call them. Look at that stone wall. That, that's another bridge with that ocean, that ocean, that water, that cleansing water. But for us to find that balance, we have to find that place where we are love. Just as Gandhi said, you know, be the change you want to see in the world. It's up to us to be the love we want to see in the world. So May Rowland, anybody familiar with May, who she is? She is a phenomenal unity woman. I, she would also be at my dinner table if I could assemble a grouping of people that have had this the most profound influence on me personally. I'll tell you a little story about May. In fact, I've... I'll show you her picture. There she is. She served as the director of Silent Unity from 1916 to 1971. Have any of you held a job that long? No. I haven't. Well, she started, truthfully, very young. She was just out of high school, and she was hired to work with uh, Charles Fillmore. And so he, she, her job was to write responses to the people that wrote letters to Silent Unity. And she kept asking Charles for help. And finally he said to her, you have the spirit of the divine within you. You can answer these letters. You have that knowing. So she began doing it herself. And you know what? She did a pretty good job. She, the longest serving director of Silent Unity today. And this is her wisdom. She says, if you're not attracting the good that you desire in your life, Learn to express love. Become a radiating center of love, and you will find that love, the divine magnet within you. Divine magnet will change your whole world. Now, I love that idea, that I have a divine magnet within me, and if I can just activate that love and really tune in and allow it to pour forth and allow the love of other people to touch me, that it's going to change the whole world. That's why I'm here. Is that why you're here? I hope so. We can accomplish great things together. And then this is my favorite little tidbit. When your heart is filled with love, you will not be critical or irritable. Wouldn't the people around you enjoy that? <laughs> <laughs> and more so, you will be divinely irresistible. I love that. Now, has anybody told you lately that you are divinely irresistible? <laughs> I'm putting that on my affirmation list. And you know what? I think you all look pretty divinely irresistible out there today. Now, some of you wait back. I can't see quite as well, but I still feel that sparkle and that love and that energy pouring forth. And those lays just set it all off, don't they? Divinely irresistible. This is another couple of unity ministers. They were married. They have made their transition, but Letty and Randolph Schmelig. And they said this, the love that is active through you soothes the struggles of others. Just by being centered in love myself, just like our chaplains bring that love and that presence to this community. When we are centered in love, we soothe others. The peace and enlightenment of the whole world is helped through you as your heart just opens and opens and opens more fully to love. Those who have been recognized as saints and seers of every faith have been God intoxicated. Has anybody been God intoxicated? I have. I bet you have too, where you were just so filled up with that energy of source, that, that knowing that you are divine, that you are just 
making a difference, that your spark is lighting up the world. God intoxicated, cosmically in love individuals. They have known love so fully that the experience has transformed their life and the lives of countless others. Now, you could probably think of people that may fit into that category, right? You know, when I ask this question, people say, oh, Mother Teresa, Nelson Mandela, uh, you know, on and on. Um, of course, the Dalai Lama. But you could be on that list too. God intoxicated. Think about it. Ponder that as you're watching football or whatever your day in includes today. We're going to continue with this theme of intoxication for just a little bit more because Rumi said this, when we are filled up with gratitude, gratitude is the wine for the soul. He says, go on, get drunk. <laughs> just be so grateful that you're just bubbling and even unsteady. It's okay because gratitude has such a profound impact on our life. And then we know that when we love another deeply, we don't have to have complete agreement, right? You know, that's a, an indicator of spiritual maturity. We don't have to all agree. We come from many different paths and many different backgrounds with many different influences on our hearts still, and yet we can love each other. It, and then this quote further says, the key is to feel the heartbeat of God within you and to know that all hearts beat at the same rhythm. How comforting is that? that we can let our hearts tune in and beat in synchrony. And what an uplifting, empowering, enlivening effect that that can have on us. Before I get to the, the three beats for love, I'm just gonna go back one second or black the screen. I just, again, I want to reiterate my, my sense of what profound opportunities and shifts that we're making in our own hearts. I think for those of us that have been attending Dallas for a while, or for those of you that are new, whatever brought you here today, something was on your heart. And as we live through those, as we move through those circumstances, miraculous things happen. We are the miracle when we allow the love to shine through us. I don't know exactly how everything's going to unfold, but I know that we're all in this together. We're all in the right place at the right time. Everybody on this planet, everybody in your life, even the ones, you know, that you're not perfect. Some people still annoy you. You know, there's still those moments. But we're all there as each other's teachers to call forth that deepest kind of love. Mother Teresa said, some people come in your life as blessings, some do come in your life as lessons. And some of you may think, well, we've had a lot of lessons here in Dallas, and I am ready for something besides these lessons. But you know, that's kind of the way life is. You know, when I was younger, I thought, well, when I get to be such and such an age, I won't have challenges anymore. Well, that, of course, is a naive and a, a adolescent or childlike perception of reality. However, we do all have quite a few tools in our to toolboxes now, right? And we're called to use those spiritual tools. We all have only scratched the surface of our greatness. We've only begun to know our own magnificence, much less the magnificence of this community. So in, in closing, I want to leave you with a few, not, you got to be aloha, let's go back. Russ will leave you with you got to be aloha. He kind of wraps it all up in song, what I'm wrapping up in words and in this visual. Three heartbeats. Sometimes I have keys, I've had oars, I kind of tie it to the theme. Since we're talking about love, we'll have little hearts. Three heartbeats for love. What needs to happen 
for you to keep this anchored in your consciousness, to just fill up with the renew, renewing flow of self-love to nurture your divinity. That means scheduling in prayer, meditation, silence, nature, time alone, time for whatever revitalizes you. It's self-care and it will allow you to thrive and everybody around you. So that's the heartbeat number one. And the second is this, to just allow your own outpouring of love to change your world. And then you know that you're going to witness profound changes in other people. For many years, I was a participant in Al-Anon. And when I got really grounded in the principles of recovery and Al-Anon, the people around me really were doing pretty much the same thing, but they looked so different to me because my lenses were different. And when I'm coming from a place of love, when I've allowed that dew to wash over and nurture and cleanse me, everything changes for the good. And then to find a way to offer gratitude in every day, you know, whether you write it down, whether you have a time of gratitude every hour on the hour. Some people set up alarms on their phones. Use this technology for good, right? And have a prayer, have a, a moment of gratitude, a moment of silence for what all is unfolding, for who you are becoming, and the love that you have chosen to share with the world. I am loving looking at you right now. I've loved being with you. And I look forward to continuing to fight through and work through and be the love for whatever is next for us as a community. Mahalo for your kindness. <laughs>